What do you think, Brenda? Are we there? We're there. Well, good morning. Oh, it's nice to see the youngsters here. We're going to get a lot of singing today. I so look forward to that, uh, from, the, from the little ones to, to the big ones, too. Uh, just a blessing, a blessing to this congregation and, a, and, a, and a, a blessing to God that we would raise our voices together and uh, the voices of children are, are, are the more blessed for it. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we, we've got plenty going on today, so let's get right to it. I uh, wanted to remind, uh, remember that the Endowment Committee is going to meet uh, at, right after services today, the Endowment Committee, uh, I assume right down there in the family room. I uh, wanted to remind and mention, too, that Ash Wednesday is already upon us. This Wednesday now, uh, the 22nd, uh, will be Ash Wednesday. We'll have, uh, I'm looking for somebody to either go no or that, but we're going to have a meal. will be about 6 o'clock, and then services will be here at 7. Is that, uh, nobody's gasping, so that must be right. Uh, so Ash Wednesday already upon us. Look forward to seeing you all uh, for those services. And uh, next Sunday, the Hot Dish Smackdown. Uh, you certainly want to be a participant in that. Uh, I, my wife insists that she's got something special that she's going to do. Uh, and uh, so uh, eager to have you all do that. Bring a hot dish. Join the friendly competition. It uh, should be a, a wonderful opportunity for us in fellowship. Uh, and I also wanted to uh, mention now uh, many may have noticed uh, right back here behind the church, kind of off the driveway of the parsonage, is a great big dumpster. Uh, we are in the process now, uh, have begun to do the uh, kind of the refurb and uh, facelift work on the parsonage, uh, preparing it uh, so that my wife and I can move in. Uh, this, uh, this summer, if all goes well. So I uh, spent this last week tearing out all of the old carpet uh, in, in the house, and then Tom and I crawled around a bit uh, pulling nails and stuff. I, I think carpet layers must get paid by the staple and the nail, because by golly, there's trillions of them in the floor. And to that end, uh, we could use some help. And so I'm putting out the general call now. Uh, there, you know, still where, where all the tack strip is and where all the staples are used to hold everything down, there's still quite a bit of that in the floor needs to be pulled. That's pliers work. That's also young knee and young back work because uh, <laughs> Tom and I both find we can only tolerate a little bit of that. Uh, so we could use some help with that this week. Uh, we'll be working in there, uh, you know, from about 9 a.m. on. Uh, during the week. Uh, it'll be, uh, the next thing on the docket will be some painting uh, to do, uh, and then we're also going to demo the, the bathroom that is on the second floor. And to that purpose, I'll put out a general call if anybody's got a rotary hammer. If you have one, then you know what that is. Uh, if anybody's got one of those, we could use that because we're going to try and take the tile up off the floor and uh, the rotary hammer is the tool of choice for that. So, could use some help this week. Uh, if you've got an hour to spare, if you've got a day to spare, that's wonderful. But, you know, there's still there's plenty to do over there. So, if you've got some time this week, just uh, let us know or just show up and, uh, and we will uh, put you to work. Bring some decent working gloves because uh, nails and staples uh, can be unkind to bare hands. That's kind of what I had. Anybody got anything else? Uh, oh, I did want to mention, too, I think, I think, in the program, it, uh, program, in the bulletin, it shows, yeah, it shows that when we do the offering, it shows everybody's got something to offer that the, the youngsters are going to lead us in. It also shows Created Me a Clean Heart. We're not going to sing Created Me a Clean Heart. We'll just, uh, we'll just go with the one that uh, the kids are leading in. So, uh, if there is nothing else, then I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Brian Meyer forward. Brian is uh, with the Gideons. Uh, he is from out Sanborn Way and visiting with us this morning. And he's going to give us a, a presentation on the Gideon ministry. And uh, Brian, it's all yours. Thank you. Thanks for being here. <coughs> I'd like to open with a word of prayer, if we could. Dear Lord, we just are so thankful for this opportunity to come and worship you so freely in this country. We ask your blessing upon all the people here today. We ask that you bless our worship and our music, and we ask that you bless our pastor. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. 
<clears throat> I am a Gideon, and so I'd like to begin. <clears throat> yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. This is our sole purpose as Gideons, to share the good news through the distribution of the Bible. We may never know the exact people whose lives will be changed, but the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, 11, my word goes out from my mouth, it will not return void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Yes, God's word is holy. Yes, God's word is powerful. At a distribution in New Guinea, there was a group of Gideons who handed out Bibles all morning long. And they went for dinner, and as they returned in the afternoon, to their dismay, they saw some of the Bibles. People had ripped them and tore them in half. And the pages were laying there on the ground, and there was some blowing in the wind. And the men, they began to gather the pages, chasing after them. Could you imagine that? Men running after paper on the ground, picking them up as it blows in the breeze. They continued their ministry that afternoon, handing out one testament after another after another. Later that evening, on their way back to the hotel, they stopped at a little store, and out in front of that store sat a little boy who was weeping, who was crying with tears on his face, and he held tight to a single page from a Bible. Crying, he said, Mr., Mister, tell me more of this Jesus. There the father also stood there weeping and saying, Tell me of this Jesus who touches my son's heart. How could this be? The men shared the love of Jesus with them, and both of them came to Christ that day. The Gideons, we are a group of about 300 thousand business and professional men all around the world and we are dedicated to winning the loss for Christ and we've been doing this distribution since about 1898 and during that time we've handed out over two and a half billion Bibles they say there's been about 10 billion Bibles printed worldwide so we've handed out a quarter of them over the last years, we place over 80 million Bibles a year. That's more than one every second. Can you imagine? Bible, 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 all day long, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. And I said, boy, we Gideons, we've been doing a good job puffing my chest up, feeling good. But then I remember, we have over 8 billion people on this planet. We've got a lot of work to do as Christians as far as sharing the work. Then I remembered Jesus telling Peter, Peter, to feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. And he said it again, feed my sheep. So that's our call. During a weekly Bible study, I sat with a prisoner in New Ulm at the Brown County Jail, and he'd done a terrible thing. He had took the life of another individual. He murdered a person. He asked me questions about eternity. What would happen to his soul? How could God love him, he asked me. How would he ever be good enough? Why would God choose to forgive him, a murderer? I told him about King David, how he had Uriah murdered. I told him about Saul and Stephen as he watched him stoned. 
I told them about the thief on the cross and how we have all sinned and how we all fall short of the glory of God and that it is by grace, grace of God, that he sent his son Jesus to the cross. That if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth, we will be saved. Jesus became that boy's, that man's savior that day. And oh, how the angels rejoiced, singing hallelujah. They shouted, the Bible tells us that angels rejoice when a lost soul is saved and returned to Jesus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the angels singing that day? How awesome that was. And just last week, I shared a testament with another prisoner named Andrew, who was in jail, who he was waiting in jail for treatment. And I handed him a Bible. As you can hear, our Bible distributions aren't just done all around the world, but they are done here in your local communities. At Farm Fest, we handed out over 300 testaments. We've been to local fairs. And many times, many times I've offered a scripture to someone and they tell me, this is the first time, the first Bible I've ever seen or touched. And I think to myself, boy, isn't that sad. It's not because they're being persecuted. It isn't that we have to hide in our basements to read our Bible. It isn't because they're so costly why one of these testaments costs less than a soda pop at a gas station. These hotel Bibles, they cost around $6 and they reach over 3,000 people generally. Think about how many people we could put a Bible into their hands. How many people could come to Christ? How many people could be saved from hell by hearing the story? I encourage you all here today. I encourage you all that it's worth the investment. The Gideons are an extension of this church's outreach. We are part of your mission team. Today, Society, our number one need is prayer. I ask you today as parishioners to pray for your pastor. Pray for your church. Pray for your family. Pray for your community. And pray for us as Gideons. The more doors that are opened, that we can get out there safely in those hostile environments, Pray that funds are available, that we're able to print more and more scriptures. Later on, I'm going to ask you that if the Lord has placed it on your heart to give today, that we'll be holding an offering. We welcome cash and checks, or there's a bulletin insert that you might use if you want to use a credit card. We also have greeting cards, a greeting card program, and I've seen that in the back of your church. And I just want to let you know that every penny, if you do decide to give, every single penny will go towards the purchase of new Bibles, more scriptures. Not a single penny is used for administrative work, for the wages of, of, of staff. That is all covered by the dues that we as Gideons pay. Paul writes in Romans 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Who? Everyone. We are all called to share the gospel and each of us is blessed with different abilities to do that. You may think, what can I do? Who am I to do anything? Or the mission, oh, it's too big. Let us take courage that we as Christians serve a much, much bigger God. Philippians 4.13 tells us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I want to thank you 
today for your time. I want to thank you today for your prayers. And I want to thank you today for your support. May God bless you and your congregation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, Brian. Appreciate that. Brian and I have the same barber, you see. We... <laughs> I'm wearing white. You know, you can't, you can't hardly go wrong. Well, uh, thanks again uh, for that. We will begin then an opening hymn, Awesome God. Uh, uh, a group will get up and lead us in that. And as they are moving to their microphones, why don't we all stand and sing together? sing now as well? Okay. More singing to do.
Well, thanks, kids and young people. That uh, just fills my heart to, to be led in, in song that way. But uh, would we all please stand now, and we will begin with our uh, brief order of confession and forgiveness. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We read in the first letter of John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so now, in a moment of silence, give unto God what troubles your heart this day. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives all our sins. And so now, as a member with you in the priesthood of all believers, but by the authority of Jesus Christ our Lord, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. We pray. O God, at the glorious transfiguration of your only Son, you confirmed the mystery of our faith by the witness of the disciples and by your own voice from the cloud. Mercifully complete our adoption as your children and give us, with our King, an inheritance of his glory. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and we will have uh, lessons and more singing and more lessons.
Good morning. Our first reading comes to us from Exodus. Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet as it were a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven of clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt, dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses went, was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from, from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 21. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for when, we, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And when we have the prophetic word for more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the, dawn, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, Knowing this, first of all, that no pro prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpre interpre sorry, interpre <laughs> for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. We do have a song, right? Yep. Shout and talk. 
want to see Jesus. Will you all please rise then for a reading of our Holy Gospel? We read today from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, in light of all that we've got going on today, I I, I wish Amanda Ufkus was here because she always wants me to make it short, and today it's going to be short. Grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The echo of the Old Testament reading against our gospel lesson presents us, I think, some interesting points to ponder. And points, I rather think, may have been in Matthew's purpose as he wrote. In the verses prior to to the text we heard today from Exodus, God has already spoken His commandments and ordinances to Moses and has directed Moses to conduct a purification ritual on the people. As our reading began today from Exodus, a rather grotesque picture, Moses is throwing blood on everybody. That's the ritual I'm talking about. The blood was from sacrificed oxen, and half of it had first been splashed on the stone altar, which had been built according to God's instructions prior. And now the rest of that blood is being thrown on the people. Blood used to purify, to make spiritually clean. Hmm... We've heard that before. Now the splashing of ox blood onto us is surely a grotesque picture to consider. But is the blood Jesus will shed for us otherwise? Just a comment, just making a remark. Our reading continues. Moses is being called to go up on the mountain again, and Aaron and Aaron's sons, that's those other two names, they'll be going along as well as those 70 elders that were called as well. And they are going up on the mountain a certain distance, we imagine some plateau, short of the summit area where God would meet Moses once again and give him the stone tablets this time of the law, and then where God would keep him for 40 days. Our Exodus lesson today does not go on into chapters 25 and 26, but told in those chapters is what God and Moses will talk about in those 40 days. God will provide Moses 
full details on the dwelling place that the Israelites are to build for him, beginning with the Ark of the Covenant and on through detailed plans for the temple and every single item that will go into it. The setting is made for this great moment by the hand of God. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the mountain in the sight of the people Israel. A great thing is about to happen. God's plan began with purification in blood and then marked by the glory of a devouring fire. God will purify His people, give them the law, and commission the people to make for Him a dwelling place that He might live among them. The great glory of God in a proclamation of light, if you will. It is God's mode of operation. It's His calling card. Now in our Gospel lesson today, we see the glory of a great and dazzling light. And we see that lawgiver and the prophet recede in its brilliance. We hear God's word of command. And then we see the new dwelling place He has devised for Himself. Emmanuel. Standing alone. God with us. Not in a temple and behind a curtain, but standing in our flesh. The Christ's first words calmed the fears of His disciples. But then His last words there foretell that this time God's plan will end with blood. The season of the Epiphany, the season of the eyes, concludes now with that last vision. A new thing has come. A new plan for God's glory and for His righteousness is before us. Look no more for great lights and consuming fires, for now it is God's living Word among us. This is what we hear from Peter's lesson. Peter does not recount his feeble words on that holy mountain. They were as insufficient as all words and deeds of men and women before the Lord, and they are better forgotten. But that the glory was revealed in a proclamation of words. God's voice declaring, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Peter stresses to us that as he and John and James heard this very voice born from heaven, that the light of God is now in this Son of God, this Son of Man. The living Word, as a lamp shining in a dark place, the living Word will bring the dawn of a new morning and its star rising into your heart. This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Hear, you people, God's new command. Listen to Him. Listen to Him. Thanks be to God. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Waymaker. Won't you please stand?
never stop working. We never stop. We never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. His name is above, His name is above depression. His name is above loneliness. Oh, His name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above every other name. That is to whom we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us declare together then, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us proceed then with our prayers for the church. We pray for the faithfulness of the church, the life of the world, and all those in need. Heavenly Father, you have called us to abide in your word and remain steadfast in faith. Thank you for sowing your word in our hearts and giving growth by your Holy Spirit. Deepen the roots you have given us so that by your power we would stand strong and never be moved from the faith of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you revealed your glory to your disciples. Through your word and in the Holy Spirit, reveal your glory to us as well, that we may hear and know that as the only begotten Son of the Father, 
you may be truly heard, that we may truly listen to your word. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We ask for guidance and pray for all those who are faced with difficult choices. We pray that in all we do, whether in word or deed, our choices, our decisions will serve your will and bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy, gracious, gracious Lord, upon all those who are ill or suffering in body or mind or spirit. Bring them wholeness and healing through the miracles of modern medicine and the men and women who have chosen it as their life's vocation. We pray especially today for Joanne and Dee Dee and Dennis and Betty and Ricky and Sandy and Tom and Sandy and Roger and Stephen, and Alan, and those we now name in our hearts or on our lips. And Lord, we pray for those in care centers like Zelda and Mary Ann, like Flossie and Ruth, and Gail and Warren and Mabel. May we serve as your comforting presence with them through our visits, our phone calls, and written greetings. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, almighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let us share together a sign of God's peace. God's peace. Good morning. Good morning.
Offering then? Won't you stand now and we will pray together our offering prayer. Lord, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us. Teach us to use them in charity and compassion, in stewardship and service to others. Through your Holy Spirit, give us awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may praise you on our lips and in our lives, that we may give ourselves to your service, that we may walk in your ways holy, and by the righteousness of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are going to sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us close by singing together the water of change. Serve the living Lord. I noticed yeah, like no one was singing. No one was singing. No one was singing either. So I was like, "Do we clap? Are you sure you want to clap?" Like, yeah, I can share her like.